There we go. Should be all set up now. Hopefully, if anybody's in here, you can hear me. Let me make sure it all got posted. Looks good. Shh. Gotta get a little warmed up here before it all starts. Hey, Finn. Oh, good to hear. I was trying to do a quick test run before I go live and I could hear it there, but I always, I always wonder if it's, you know, uh, it's, you know, through the same system, if it's I can just hear it or if uh, something went wrong. But good to hear you guys can hear me. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. How's the practice on the last two moves been going? 13 is a really fun one. The shooting star is like everyone's favorite move in pinion three. Until it's black belt test time and then they get upset. Try and make people hold it for a little too long. Remember after this, it's coming up. Boom, and then down there. We'll get a little bit of practice in in a minute. Who we got? Hey, see if you just in. How's everything been going? Pinion 9 been going well? Have you had a chance to practice a little bit of it? Also, I think that we should be down to about five seconds delay. I think it's still out there. Going okay, good to hear. A little bit of okay, a little bit of practice will build up over time, it'll start feeling a lot better. But as I said, I'm pretty sure down to about five seconds. So if you type something, I should be able to see it, you know, right away with that, and then uh, the stream goes to you in about five seconds. Good to hear Super Justin. It's an interesting one. Whole bunch of new moves with like the grip break and then the whatever this thing is. And it just kind of looks like a math equation of some sort. Just some graph. What we got? We got like a U-strike coming up and an uppercut in pinion 9-2. Well, pretty unique. I don't remember any other uppercuts in any of the pinions. So I'm trying to like rack my brain through all 12 of them. It's like the kind of overhead kind of feels like an uppercut, same kind of motion. I don't know. I'm going to stay moving around a little bit. It's a little chilly in here. I think last I checked, it's like 50, so, uh, oh, it was 64. It's gotten a little warmer. That's good to know. What number were we at, Super Justin? Was it like, it was 24, right? So far? We got up through like, boom, 24. We got 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31 coming up, 32, and then after 33 here, we get to do everything again on the opposite side. Well, not everything, but like that last little part with a grip break. Reviewing it some more. Yeah. So we went one, two, three, four. It's one of those pinions where I like go through it and then I think back and like oh, I don't really have a set count for it since it's changed for me when I was learning it like so many times. And I guess that's kind of the mark of a true pinion, right? You want it to be one continuous move. You get to that by like learning each individual one, but then building on it and building on it until 
you get to the point you can flow through the whole thing. Yeah, more or less. It'll, it'll get us number count and it'll, it'll change by next year, I'm sure. Oh, the fun parts and the, the bad parts of Kaiju Kempo, I guess you can say. Somewhere in the 53 count is what we're at right now. Uh, I want to say it's 53. But right, it can, it can depend on how precise you get it. I've seen pinions where the count was like so, so broken down to so many small pieces that there was like, for a side to side, you had one, two, three, which seems like a lot to me, but I've seen it. Same thing with like pinion three, right? We've got the move when you go boom, boom, boom as one move, and I've seen it as one, two, three, four moves before. Uh, I don't think that was in our school, but just in our style at some point. So I've got about five minutes here till we get started. You guys got a good space to practice? A little bit of space? I've got like five by five feet here. I tend to not go past this. I think that's about my cutoff usually. It's like five by four feet. At least when I'm here at the school. The like two days week that I'm in here. Pinion eight, three, four, five. Oh yeah, yeah. That's how the three, four, and five can change you mean? Sometimes that's five, sometimes five is all of that. But right, once you get to this point and you're like in a black belt pinion, you realize that it's not a certain set of moves, but it's like this one continuous move. That should feel like one pinion as opposed to 53 or 21 individual pieces. Oof, I gotta make sure my head doesn't get cut off. Pin six. Pin six is a pretty good example on that, yeah. A lot of times it's more of like, where do the moves go in pinion six? Hey, Super Rishi. Hope pinion nine's been going, for, uh, going well for you. Me and Super Justin have been talking about uh, the change in counts always. So we've got about four minutes here. Most of the lower level pinions, like in the, the first seven, right? Those ones don't have too big of a change. The count's been consistently the same for ever since I remember. It's when you get to eight and nine and Every once in a while, 11 or 12 get broken down a little differently. Um, my viewer says five. I'm not sure if there's anybody else in here or not. That, uh, that number's always been different to me. I know Finn was here a little bit ago. But we've still got a couple minutes till we start. Usually people jump in right around 3.30 or a minute after that. Three twenty-six ish right now according to Cardi Time. Let me make sure this is all set up here well. Yeah, if you want to review ten to twenty real quick, let's do that right now. We got some time before class starts. Well the time is definitely different on my computer, but yeah, um let's see. I believe ten is ten all the way up through uh or that was right before. Let's just do the whole thing. I'm going to go squatting position, one, two, three, four, bottom fist being five, six, seven, my standing screen, yep, eight, nine, ten, for eleven it was the right foot comes back and we have the open hand outward block, if I turn you can see it like this, we do a side kick. 
And when we step back into our forward stance, it's a downward crosswalk, so I'm facing this way. That would be 12, right? 13, we open up. 14, roll. 15, outward block punch. And then uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 is the same thing on the other side. All right, I'm going to turn this way so you can see it. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then we added 21, 22, 23, 24. Uh, yesterday was when we, I got that video finally posted. Of course. 24 is where we get to add in the, I want to face this way. You'll be able to see a little better. We step forward into another grip break. To the side for a spear. The front here. An inward block. And we've only got a couple more moves left on this half of the form. Eight. I got about a minute here before we start. Let me get this posted one more spot. There's the unmute, all right. Yes, sir, I, knew, I was, had to type up real quick. I wanted to make sure that uh, it didn't attack you. The cameras and the mic is right next to the keyboard there. Uh, looks like we got a minute, according to karate time, until we get started. If you guys wanted to move around a little bit, not do anything too extreme. Yeah, we want to make sure we get our heart rate up. Let's see if we can go in here. Super cool. I'm going to scoot back a little bit here. This has been like my go-to warm-up for a while, just kind of bounce back and forth, get the arms moving, legs moving a little bit. Nice and simple to do. Wait until the next black belt test, you'll see me doing this. Getting some leg swings going too. Like seven more seconds we'll get started. All right guys, let's get started here. Ready, clap for attention. How do you guys feel today? I hope you said awesome, sir. Let's back you up and let's start jogging in place. What I had in the uh, warm-ups this week is that kind of heart rate up, get the body in motion, was just jogging nice and simple. You can do it without moving around a lot. You can do it without jumping up and down. Uh, but if you have the ability to, right, we can add some sprints in here. If you want to add high knees or butt kickers, uh, we'll go through all of them. If you can't do that wherever you're at right now, uh, let's stick to just the, the normal here. It's better to get a little bit of a workout in than uh, going extreme and hurting yourself or something like that. So, just jog in for a little bit. We'll go about 10 more seconds, 15 more seconds here. If you've got enough space, you can see I'm just kind of inching forward and then my head's out of frame and kind of inching back in my uh, square here. Inching forward and that way I've got a little bit of motion at least. All right, we'll get a sprint here. Uh, five seconds here, we'll sprint for five seconds. We'll go right back to jogging, ready? And go, sprinting, three, two, one, and jog. We'll get a couple intervals of this. So, uh, gonna jog about 10 seconds after we finish there. So in four more seconds now, we'll get to a sprint again. Ready, and sprint. Three, two, one, and jog. We'll get uh, uh, some butt kickers going here. <clears throat> Again, if you can switch it up here, awesome. Uh, if you can't, then, oh man, I'll have to get that class starts off in a second. If you can't, that's fine. Do what you can. High knees for a little bit. 
Good, back to jogging. I want you guys to keep jogging for a little bit here. Five more seconds. There we go, now we can see everything. All right, let's get another sprint here. We're gonna go five seconds total, ready? Set and go. Four, three, two, one, and break. Good, shake the arms out, shake the legs out a little bit. We're gonna go through the same warm-ups that I got posted on like a Tuesday night. Um, if you've got a weight that you wanted to use, whether it's, I've got a nice small 10 pound dumbbell here, or if you wanna put a backpack on for some squats, uh, you can do that too. Or if you wanna like hold a textbook in front of you for uh, teens and adults, all those are good. Uh, if you're a kid's class, stick with a regular one. Body weight's always gonna be better. Um, let's scoot our way back here. So first one, doing just regular squats. We're gonna go 30 seconds total, okay? So, let me find my time up there. For these first ones, I'm gonna have a nice little weight here. 30 seconds, squats, and go. And notice I'm gonna keep my feet flat on the ground through this. Toes pointed out just a little bit for me, that's what's comfortable for me. And I want my toes to follow, or my knees to follow my toes. So I wanna avoid my knees caving in. My toes are going out that way, I want my knees to go there too. We've got 10 more seconds of these squats, guys. Five more seconds. One more second. And break. All right. I'm going to set this down for now. The next warm up was also a leg workout one. I've got a little chair that I'm going to use. If my memory serves me correctly, it was called Bulgarian lunges, where you'd put your foot up on top of something behind you. You're not going to have a whole bunch of weight on it. You can even go top of the foot down. And then you're going to do a, a lunge on one side here. And then back up. Down and back up. An alternative would just be a regular lunge. I start here, and we're going to stick on one side for 30 seconds, and then we'll do 30 seconds on the other side. You could use a small little chair if you've got another sturdy chair you wanted to use, or a couch, or footrest, something like that. You can. Lunge is always a good option too. 30 seconds. Ready? And go. It may take a little bit at the beginning to kind of set yourself up to get the right distance. That's fine. You want to find what's comfortable for you. It's like we're about 20 seconds in on this side. We're going to get 20 seconds on the other side. Or sorry, 30 seconds on the other side after. Three, two, one, and break. All right, guys. Other side, put that other foot up or other foot back, depending on which version you chose. We're going to go 30 seconds, all right? 30 seconds and begin. I think I saw something about uh, making up the, oops, excuse me, student black belt test and black belt test. We'll get to that as soon as we can, but right now, focus on making sure we can do the best with what we've got. If we can't have class here, class online, keep building it, making it better and better. Once we can reopen, then we'll look into dates of student black, black belt test, you know, uh, you name it. Five more seconds here. And break. Excellent. Next warm up, we've got burpees. So again, with these ones, there's a whole bunch of different variations you can do. Uh, you can go nice and simple, where I'd start here in a squat, sprawl out, come back into my squat. I can add a jump and then sprawl out, or I can even add a push up at the end too, where I'll do my jump squat, sprawl out, push up, and back. I've been dealing with a little wrist issue here, so you're going to notice I'm usually sticking up to my finger, fingertips, that way it doesn't put any pressure on my wrist. If you need to adjust anything due to an injury, please feel free, do whatever's going to keep your body safe. So. 30 seconds of burpees, guys. Ready? 30 seconds starting in now. Go for it. We're about 10 seconds in already. Time sure does fly when you're having fun. We're already at the halfway point, everyone. It means we've got 15 seconds left. Five more seconds. So we get two more. Last one. 
and break. Hopefully you guys said the best one. Uh, we've got one more warm up. We've got some crunches. We're gonna be going 45 seconds, all right? So, find some space. Make sure you're not gonna hit your head on anything. Lay down on your back. And remember, with crunches, you don't have to come all the way up. The goal is to get the shoulder blades off the ground. So crunch up, back down, up, back down. And really think of the, uh, about the ab muscles as you go through this. Instead of just trying to get your body up, think about tightening your abs, squeezing them to pull you up. You're gonna feel a big difference in it when you really focus on that. 30 seconds, crunches, ready, two, one, go for it, I'm sorry, 45 seconds. The rest of them are 30, but this one, 45. Ooh, we're 15 seconds in. Means we're one third of the way done. We're at that halfway point, everybody. Keep those crunches going, keep it up, keep it up. We have 15 seconds left. 10 seconds left, keep it short. Five more seconds. And break. All right, let's get a little bit of stretching going here. Um, if you wanna add a second circuit in at the end of class, that's awesome. I wanna save a little bit more time for reviewing the opinions we've been working on and going over how we can get them a little sharper in different drills that I always like to do when I'm building up my opinions. So, Make your way back. Uh, let's get a little bit of stretching here. We're gonna go front leg swings. For this one, hands up, back leg. Just gonna swing up in front of you. We're not going for any number. Just about 20 seconds here. Ten more seconds. Start to build your way higher and higher with this one. All right, at the beginning you wanna warm the muscles up. One more. Other side, about the beginning, all right, warming the muscles up. Don't push it too much. Feel out what's comfortable and what's not. Oops, going to the side there. About five more seconds. And break, all right. I'm gonna go split position. I'm going to scoot in a little bit more, make sure I can see if anyone mentioned anything. It's one of those things you don't want to, you know, ever forget about or leave to the side and say, eh, I'll skip stretching. Makes you get a good amount of stretching in. Always work the legs. The core is really important too. You can see someone says something there. I'm going to go butterfly stretch. Uh, left, right splits. If you want to add them in, go for it. But I want to take the time as we're going through some stretching here to talk about the message of the week. Uh, was posted uh, last night, ooh, two nights ago, I think. Tuesday night, I think I was able to get it up. If not, it might have been Wednesday afternoon. But um, Stomp Out the Fire quickly was our message of the week for any kids' classes. The idea that uh, if you've got a small problem, it's very easy to take care of. Right, a small fire on a match, really easy to blow out. But if the fire grows and you've got a campfire or forest fire, then it takes a whole lot more time to put out. And same with any problems. Right, if I've got a little bit of, let's go one foot out. Let's go back, yeah, you can kind of see it here. One foot out, keep the feet flat. So you notice I'm not tucking this foot underneath. Just bring it to the side and reach. Um, if I've got a whole bunch of clothes just all over the ground in my, in my room, then that takes a really long time to take care of. Uh, but if you got one every day and you put it in the laundry hamper, man, that's easy. Other side. And then for teen and adult message of the week, it was uh, not actually a message of the week, but just a thought process is think about what in life you are the most happy about. And everybody right now, everybody too, even in the kids' class, right? Think, what are you most happy about? And don't just think the first thing, try and look through your brain. Think, what else? I'm gonna go frog stretch next. What are you most happy about? And what's gonna happen when you start to think about that is it forces you 
to start thinking about something else and then something else. And you're like, well, actually, am I more happy about this or that or maybe this other thing over here? And you just kind of like scan through your whole brain for the best things in life. And even if uh, it's an easy time to say oh, all these negative things are happening, that's going to help force you to think about the good things that happen in life and look for the, look for the positives, look for the bright line, uh, the bright side of everything. That could be a good one to think, think about. Or that you're in a position that you can help other people too, right? You can help other people by keeping your distance and making sure they stay healthy. Anyways, uh, let's get to some review of our opinions. Every single level, every rank has been working on opinions for the last two weeks from uh, beginners all the way up through um, black belts. So let's review them all. Black belts, if you guys already know opinion one, which you should, uh, still do it with us. It's a good thing to go back and review. I always mention that I don't remember opinion one because I learned it as a white belt. I remember it because I did it yesterday. Right, is the constant review that allows us to keep something in our memory, in our long-term memory. So, let's start off. We got uh, opinion one, part A. Uh, this is going to be the front of my room over here. That way, rights and lefts are really simple. Uh, we can see them together. So, opinion one, part A. You start set position. Left hand open, right hand closed. Slide into a horse's stance. Move number one. Left foot comes back. Right hand, outward block. Remember the idea with this, this is our left side, of, or, uh, um, sorry, right side over here. If we're in this stance, it's called a forward stance. Feet in opposite corners of a square, my front knee should be bent, and my back leg should be straight. So, left leg is back, right leg is uh -uh, forward, right hand outward block. Move two, right foot steps back, left hand upward block. Double check that this hand is in the chamber, especially black belts, when it's something we're reviewing or advanced students. Uh, it can be easy to get sloppy because you stop thinking about that. You're like, oh yeah, I know this. But keep those chambers there. Three, I don't know my foot's going to be out of frame, but I'll fix it in a second. Left foot back, right hand, inward cross block. So again, one was left foot, right hand. Two, we switch. Three, we switch again. For four, left foot is moving, comes up, we turn to the right side of the room, step back with our left foot and downward cross block. Finally for five, right leg comes all the way up to the front, open hand, upward cross block, pull it back in. Beginners, that was what you guys had worked on. Uh, this module, I want you guys to start reviewing it as many times as you can. Uh, face different directions every time if you're comfortable with that. It helps us uh, remember turning left and right and not using visual cues. Now, level ones, the end of pinion one, it was part C. We left off part B with a punch with our left hand. For 11, step forward, elbow smash. 12, we had this big circle. And for 13, the left foot slides behind us. We turn around and outward block with the left hand. Now I know it's swapped here, so I'm gonna turn around and do the last couple moves facing that wall again. Um, that way you guys can follow along with me, but note that if the first two go this way, the last three should go that way. Anyways, let's say that I just turned around, 13, 14, we grab, 15, step forward, horse's stance, horse stance here, you can see my body a little better from this side, rising strike with the uh, right hand, notice if I stick my thumb out, it would point down, that's how I know I'm striking the correct way. Finally, cat stance, left hand down, right hand back knuckle for 15, then we're done. We'd go horse's stance, set position, natural stance. Level ones, I want you guys to work on that real quick, all right? Level twos, we had pinion number two, part B. Uh, the move six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, or seven, eight, nine, and 10, I should say. So, I'm gonna face this way. We left off, six is the chop. Uh, this would normally go to the back of the room. I'm gonna do it this way so you can follow along a little bit easier. Eight, we go side, I'm sorry, seven, we go side to side on the right side. Eight was the side kick with the left, check to the right, and now our right foot steps, scroll over, horse's stance. Now kicking to the left side of the room with our right foot, front kick, bottom fist, and you can tell this bottom fist is coming on the inside of my leg while I kick. Step into a horse's stance, bottom fist, and then final move, going the same direction as my bottom fist, cross the legs, Calm down, grip break. 
Now I'll do it one more time. I'm going to change directions. Imagine my chop is going backwards uh, to the back of the room. If you're following along with me, this chop would be going away from the screen. Side to side. Left leg side kick towards the front. Check to the back. Scroll to the front. For nine, we've got the front kick bottom fist. And then 10, cross the legs. Left hand down, right hand does a mid block. Last thing I wanted to mention on that is you might remember in pinion one at the end, we had something called a back knuckle, right? So if I face this way, it extends out and pulls back in. This one circles. It's supposed to be a block. It's pushing something out of the way. If I face you, see that? Back knuckles out and back. That's our mid block. It's very much like an outward block. Now, on to the next one, level threes. We did uh, part B of pinion three. We left off after the front kick, bottom fist. Eight is side to side on the right side. Big one here, makes you take big steps. Right foot comes up over the top, left foot over. Switch to the other side to side. Chop with the right hand, that's 10. Step in, punch with the left hand, that's 11. Elbow smash, that's 12. I'm gonna scoot back so I stay in my square. 13, we're gonna turn 90 degrees to the left. 14, again, turning 90 degrees to the left, upward block and punch. Level threes, I want you guys to get a quick review of that. Level ones, you got about, in beginners, about 30 more seconds, get two more reviews in. Black belts, we added four moves. Let's do these super fast. We left off, move number 20, outward block right, punch left. For 21, left foot steps forward. I'm in a back, uh, T stance here, grip break. I'm going to turn to the side. There we go. For the next one, 22 I believe it is. Step straight to the left. Spear. I'm going to grab on. Back to that T stance. And I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, I don't remember what I was taught with this or what it exactly it is. Um, but I'm checking with uh, some other third and fourth degrees to see if they were ever, uh, it was ever mentioned to them. But I was always just told to put your hands here. And then last move here. Left foot steps to the front of the room into a horse's stance, and word block. So if I was right here, I'll mirror it real quick. So we got right hand up, left hand down. This uh, left foot here is going to step horse's stance, and word block across the body. That's the last move. So black belts, get a quick review of that one, okay? For beginners and level ones, if there's any of you guys in here watching, or if you're watching later on in the uh, video, the saved one, I want you guys to start with practicing just stances, right? Just stances. So what that means is, let's say I take pinion 1A, for example. The whole thing would be, and I want to face towards you guys so you can see a little easier. So I start here, I step to my right, and then I would be stepping back and doing my block, and doing my block, right? But instead, I can either keep my hands on my hips, or my hands in my chambers, set position, slide into a horse's stance, and then I'd go through the same thing. Left foot is gonna step back. That would normally be my outward block, right? But I'm not gonna do the block. I'm just gonna look at my feet. Are my feet flat? Yes, that's good. Is my front knee bent? Yes, that's good. Is my back knee straight? Uh-oh, it is not. I gotta stick that back, there we go. That's good. And then I do the next one. I go through the same thing. Are my feet flat? Is my front knee bent? Is my back knee straight? And it can help us really focus on sharpening up our stances instead of just thinking about our hand technique. So, beginners and level ones, I want you guys working just those footwork, all right? Level twos, threes, and fours, if whatever you guys are at, break two. Uh, if you guys didn't just hear, I want you guys doing the same thing now that you've got a chance to review a little bit uh, that the beginners and level ones are doing, is just look at the stances. Black belts, we've got, on student blacks, we've got a brand new stance in there with a T stance. Make sure that you take the time in this to look at it and make sure that it's right. Uh, very much like a back stance, but uh, instead of going corner and side, it's flat and straight out, right? And we got even footwork or even weight. Um, but quick example, level threes. We had done this. Okay. Instead of that, I'm just gonna stick right here. Move number eight, simple, I don't move. Nine, step, step. 10 would have been the chop, but you know what? I'm just worried about my stance. Right? Just look your way through the stances and make sure you're as sharp as you can be. I want you guys to go 30 seconds there, okay? Just footwork, 30 more seconds. 
and get a quick drink of water here. Once you guys have done that, go ahead and uh, let me know when you're ready. We're about 10 seconds in. 15 second mark, get about 15 more seconds in. Just looking at those stanzas. You've got five more seconds here. So you can get like one last set of moves through. All right, once you guys have wrapped that up, uh, go ahead and uh, take a seat, face back towards me. All good, you got it, cool. So, um, the big reason that I like to practice that, and I did it a lot when I was getting ready for tournaments. I used to uh, compete in a lot of tournaments when I was like brown belt, brown black, black belt, uh, around those ranks there. Um, is when you do the whole pinion, th there's a lot to think about. And when you have a whole lot of things to remember, it gets harder to do. Right? If I gave you a string of like 28 numbers and said, remember this, it's going to be really tough. But if you take the time and say, hey, I'm just going to remember four of them. And then later, okay, I've memorized that, I'm going to look at another four of them. Right? It becomes easier. So with the stances, same idea. Instead of having to think, okay, I'm going to step, uh, I'm going to move into my block here, do this with my hand, do this with that hand, and move into that stance all at the same time, all that I'm worried about is that. And I'm going to look down. Yep, my legs are touching, my foot, right foot is flat, my left foot's got the heel up in the air. Good. Right? It's much less to process and it can allow us to sharpen those things up, whereas if we just did the whole form, uh, we'd probably skip by that move without too much thought because we're like, yeah, I already know that, right? Uh, myself included. I spend a lot of time just going back and saying, I'm going to do my stances because I want those to be sharp. So, uh, pick your opinion one more time. I want you to just do the stances, okay? Uh, whatever section you're on, part A, part B, or part C, or black belts, whatever part of opinion nine this is. Um, just go through it with the stances, okay? I'm gonna pick pinion number one uh, C, pinion one C to do for me. All right, go for it, everybody. Ten, eleven would have been my elbow smash, but just keep it right there. Twelve, I don't do anything. Thirteen. Double check my balance, my feet flat. Yes. Think about my horse's stance. Do I have good posture? Ooh, there we go. Fifteen. And 16. Awesome, everybody wrap that up. Just one quick time through. All right, I'm assuming everyone got through one time. Uh, let, let's move on to, to the next thing here. So, what we're working at, uh, you can probably guess it, is the opposite of this one, is just hand techniques. So same reasoning, if I just look at my footwork, it allows me to isolate it down to little details and think about it. It's like a small little thing to work on. Same thing if I go to my hand techniques. I don't have to worry about what my feet are doing. All I have to worry about is right hand outward block, left hand upward block, right hand inward block, right? And it makes it easier to process. So uh, what you can do is either continue facing the same direction the whole time. So for example, pinion one, the first part, we had an outward block right hand, upward block left, inward right, downward cross block, and then upward cross block. I can do that face to you the whole time, or I know the first three moves, face to the front. For the next one, you turn to the right side. And then for the last one, I turn around to the left side. If you want to turn the sides to kind of keep in your mind of where you're going, go for it. If you want to continue facing the same direction the whole time, you can do that too. So, uh, just looking at the hand techniques, I'm going to pick pinion two, uh, part B, to jump into the level twos if you guys are watching, right? Uh, but go through just the hand techniques for this one, okay? Find some space, make sure you got it, and then pick if you're going to turn side to side. I'm going to do that one, or if you want to stay facing the same way, okay? Go for it. Sorry. Chop. Side to side. Make sure you take your time. I'm going to double check that my arm is flat. If it was like this, it's angled down. Oh, not good. Uh, side kick. Check to the back. Scroll to the front. Bottom fist there. Bottom fist. Mid block. Do it one more time. I'm going to pick face in a different direction now. Side kick. 
check, to scroll. Excellent. Give you about 10 more seconds, and then jump back over. Right, I would spend like 30 minutes working on just one of these. 30 minutes, just stances, stances, stances. Sometimes it would be the whole form. Just go 1 through 21, opinion 3, and work on just the stances. Sometimes I would break it down even more, and it's like 4 and then 5 or 6 move sections. Uh, however, uh, the instructor told me to do it that day. But uh, the idea, again, is that I want to minimize what I'm working on so I can get the maximum benefit from it. Uh, work on a small number of moves, really focusing on where my hands are, Ah, there we go, right? To make sure that, oh, there we go, that they're going to the right spot. You can see I'm just kind of making uh, corrections as I go to make sure I'm as sharp as I can be. Excellent. I want you guys to pick which one you want to do. You're going to go 30 more seconds total, okay? 30 seconds, pick either just the footwork or just the hand techniques, whatever you personally think you need more work on, okay? So I know I need more work on my stances. I always work on them, but man, I can get my hand techniques pretty sharp. It's my stances I need to improve on. So. Pick one of your form, uh, pick your form, and then uh, pick your section there, whatever you've been working on, and pick either hands or feet, okay? I'm gonna do pin in three uh, for all level threes out there. I'm gonna make sure my stance is nice and low. Chop right there. Punch. Oh, we should reset. Again, think about it. Are your feet flat if you're doing stances? If you're doing strikes, are the punches and the blocks coming right off the shoulder? I don't want my punch going down like this if you look at the screen. Instead, I want it right off my shoulder. You can use a mirror at home. You can use a, a window at night if you got lights on. You look in the window and you can see reflection. Those really help to, to practice those. All right, 10 more seconds, guys. See if you can go through that one more time. <clears throat> One more time, get just the stances or just the hand techniques through. Five more seconds. Wrap it up, wrap it up, and wherever you got, let's break. All right. So, uh, real fast, any question on those two drills? Well, they seem pretty straightforward. If I see nothing, I'm going to assume it's pretty straightforward and you guys are feeling good with it. I want to do a little bonus thing for anyone who watches this video or anyone who uh, um, is, is here live or watching it later on. Uh, if you want to learn something new, something else that's not in our curriculum right now. All right, so this something new is called the stance form. Done, all wrapped up. Okay, cool. See if Django. So this is called the stance form. Uh, if you're like a second degree black belt, you might have seen this a really, really long time ago. But uh, it's another one of those things where I can look back at just my stances, but it's got a certain set of moves. So uh, let's start, if you guys are ready. And just heads up, right, this is not going to be on your black belt test, your student black test. Uh, if you're testing for third degree, yes, it will. Surprise. Um, maybe. Uh, we're going to do the stance for him. So it would be like this. I'm going to face the same direction as you guys. You can follow along with me. Start off set position. You're going to slide into a horse's stance. And this is actually move number one. So you're not uh, sliding into it at the beginning, but move number one is slide into a horse stance, all right? So everyone slide into a horse stance, two, up. Now, it's about working on our stances and our different transitions. So I'm gonna scoot back a little bit here. Move number uh, two, right foot comes up. And if you're higher rank, you know what it is. If you're a beginner level one, you may not have heard of this before, but it's called a transition stance. And we're gonna be doing them between just about every single stance. So if I start right here, I bring my feet back together, and from there I move on to my next stance. Left foot is stepping forwards into a forward stance. And that's going to allow us to, every time we go into a forward stance, we're in that transition. Or any time I go into a horse's stance, I'm going to start in that transition stance. So here, we did one, two, three, one more time. We're hitting the front right corner and then the front left corner after that. Start, one, two, the right foot goes to the front right, three, we'll do two more, you can probably guess at this point what we're going to do, back right, 
and then back left. But if you notice, after each move, I'm bringing myself back to that transition stance in the middle. So if this is like my starting point right here, I'm always going to have a foot there. Watch. Left foot's there. Left foot is still there. Now my right foot's there. And you can see I'm always coming back like this home base before I go on to my next move. That's the first five moves in the, in the uh, stance form. Sorry, I almost forgot for a second. I was going to call it like the safety stance. But that's the first five moves in the stance form. Uh, I'll show you guys real quick what the whole thing is, and we'll keep building it as we go through different, uh, different live classes. But the entire thing would end up being... Back, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and done. We'll keep building as we go through that, but let's get a quick run through on that, okay? Uh, we're both. Great exercise for both aerobics and stretching. Uh, was that in reference to Steve Justin? I don't remember if I said something a second ago. I'm gonna do it again, the first five moves. One, two, three, four, five. Let's add two more on for anybody that's, uh, that's joining in with us, all right? Six and seven. And again, if anyone just tuned in or a second ago jumped in, uh, we're just doing a bonus thing for, uh, for the stream here. Anyone who's in or watching later is we're just doing uh, something called the stance form. It's not part of the curriculum right now, but uh, it's a great way to practice just stances. So if we left off, move number five is right here. It's the exact same move as uh, 13 and pinion 1, so if you're level 1, you're working on it right now. 2s, 3s, 4s, you guys have seen this before. Left foot slides behind, and we turn into another forward stance. Double check your stance. This stance feels a little different to me. I think it might be too narrow. It uh, looks about right, but if I step here, my knee's going over. I needed it to be a little deeper. There we go. Uh, so that's 6, and then 7. The right foot steps to the back of the room. We turn to our left for a horse's stance. So let me turn it around so I can pretend to be you. If you turn here for six, seven, we're going to turn to the left and go into a horse's stance. Again, double checking my feet are flat, my knees are bent, I've got good posture as I go through the whole thing. All right? One more time, I'm going to go one through seven. Uh, and it looks like we're just about out of time for class here today. I'm a little over. Ready? We start. We go one. Horse to stance. We've got an upward cross block on that one. Right foot forward for two. Left foot for three. Right foot for four. Left foot for five. And now left foot goes behind us for six. We turn, face the back of the room, and our right foot is going to step to the back of the room. We turn to our left, it would actually be the right side of the room, we go into a horse's stance. That, first half of the trans, uh, stance form. We've got uh, eight more at the end here uh, to wrap up all these other stances, but if you guys have been doing it for a while, you probably know those stances. You get a chance to look at something new and try something new. But um, this is my idea. I wanted to have some stuff in here where uh, you're probably not going to see it in regular classes when we come back. It's not going to be part of curriculum videos. Uh, we've got kicking sets that uh, used to be in there too. Uh, we had some striking sets and blocking sets. If you guys want to learn those and learn kind of like history of uh, what we've done in the school before, then keep jumping into these videos here. Bye, Super Django. All right, guys. But let's come back. I'm going to get your attention here real quick. We'll bow. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, I'm just going to read through and hang around for a second here. If you've got questions on uh, any of your opinions or anything in general, then uh, I'll be here for a little bit more. All right? But let's go to attention. 
Good work, guys. If you had any pictures you got taken of yourself, please let, uh, let us see them. Show them on uh, Instagram and tag us or uh, in the Discord. You can post it there. It'd be cool to see that you guys were here. From attention, let's bow out. Good work, guys. Hope I had some fun. I always have fun practicing pinions, but you're heading out. Bye, guys. If anyone's got any questions, then uh, now is a great time. Bye, Sifu Rishi. And thank you, Sifu Justin, for being here. It's always more fun when I know people are here and people are uh, typing in saying, hey, I got this done, I got that done. Having fun. The whole of pinion eight, yes I can. Let me see if there's anything else super quick to do. Or any other quick question before I jump up. Pinion eight's the, uh, did you want like step by step? Like go one move at a time? Or you just want me to go through the whole thing? I'm happy to do both, just let me know. Maybe both? All right. Let me go uh, one time through regular first. Let me get this out of the way. Um, this one moves a lot forward and backwards, so there's going to be times where, uh, especially on the all out, that I'm probably out of frame a little bit, but I'm going to do my best to keep myself in there, okay? going through the moves, uh, super quick, kind of like move by move. One was set position, two was the cover, right side kick, right chop, three, upward block and front kick, four, to the back, into our uh, horse stance with the check, five, I believe it is, side kick left foot to the back, Check and scroll. Let's go forward a little bit. Six. Touch the ground facing the front. You squat down. Then you've got your jump turn around house kick almost auto body or tornado picky. Left, right. Check to the back of the room. Right foot side kick to the back of the room. It's going to step forward into a forward stance. And the right hand does a downward block. Next move, I forget where we're at. Back kick, step forward and grab, and get ready for a knee smash. Knee smash, and after the right foot steps forward, you've done your check and scroll here. Blocking scheme on, on your right side. I think it looks like the left side on the screen there. Hands around, right leg roundhouse kick. Turn all the way back to the front of the room. Downward block, left hand, that's 12. 13, right leg Kempo. Horse stance, outward block right, and then left, right, left for punches for move 14 to finish it off. You got that rapid left, right, left at the end. Oh, pinion nine. <laughs> yeah, I can do pinion nine in a second. Let me get my breath real quick. Thanks, Sebastian, for being here. It's always better when there's people in here, too. Hope you had some fun with pinion one there, Sebastian. That always holds a special place in my heart. It's the first one I ever learned. One of my favorites to go back to. You'll hear me say it again and again. I really like going over like the basics of stuff. Go over forward stances and horses stances and practice my outward blocks and just punches. Because it allows me to do the more advanced stuff even sharper. But if those punches are sloppy, those stances are sloppy, then uh, I lose it. Um, how about this, you Justin? I'll do like an all out up to 20, and then I'll go kind of step by step through the rest, okay? Once I, once I get up there, I'm, uh, I'm going to not do, go over move count right now, though. Opinion one, pad two review is super fun. Oh, yeah. All right, so because uh, we just did 21 to 24 uh, this week, there should be a video of that up there. Uh, so I can kind of go step by step on those ones, too. And then uh, after that, 
Next week we're going to add, where do we leave off? 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9. We might go up to like 30 for the next week, and then we're just like done with the pinion basically, because we get to do it again on the other side. But uh, one time, quick review. Right, move number one was set position, two was left, right, left. We step to the back right corner into a T stance, grip break. And the grip break, let me come in this way a little bit. You can see it a little bit better, I think, uh, if I'm going this side here. Boom, is you really want to get the flick of the wrist as you bring your arms out with a little bit of power. And wherever your hands are at, if you circle the arms, they should come together and like complete a circle. Boom, that way. Uh, if I've got my hands like this or something, right, you can tell that's not going to work. I've got to get them that way. That's the goal. Uh, it's hard to kind of just describe. Uh, just see me a lot whenever we do this again in the school, moving around, helping people move their hands in the right spots. But uh, one, two, that would have been three, four, and then five is the bottom fist, six, uh, left, right. And for this one, the set position stays the same, even though I'm switching sides, because from here, the right hand is going to be on the inside, so if I can come in this way, you can see the hand that's closed is going to stay right there. So we're going to go left, right, open, grip break in our T-stance, left hand punch underneath, right hand inner block, bottom fist. From there, step back, right hand block, right foot side kick, Back into our forward stance, downward cross, open the cross block, roll with the hands open, and outward block punch. We do the same thing. Other side, left hand on top now, close, open, roll, outward block punch. That's the new one we started working on. Let me come over this way. I think this will be the best side. Left foot steps forward, it's behind us right now. T stance, so my right foot is flat here, pointing to the right side, left foot to the front, grip break. Left foot lunging forward stance, grab on. Left foot comes back up to the front. T stance with the right hand doing like an outward block thing, and left hand doing like a downward block. And then left foot steps to the front, inward block. That's where we left off. And super quick, the rest of it, we get the Kempo kick, punch, side to side, U strike to the back, upward cross block, front kick, punch, side to side. We'll probably wrap up right there next week. Step over, and from this point, we're doing the same thing on the opposite side. Brick break, spear, this thing. Inward block, Kempo, side, punch, side, U, uppercut, uh, kick and punch. And then we change stuff up, palm up, outward block, back knuckle. Same thing, other side, palm block, upward block on the left, outward block left, back knuckle left, done. And we wrap it up at that. But that's the end of pinion nine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, check out especially that 21 to 24 video, and if you got questions, let me know. I'm always around on Discord. I can answer people's questions. But um, thanks for hanging around. See you with Justin. Doing a little extra opinion nine. I'm going to wrap it up at that, though. I uh, hope you had some fun, man, and I uh, hope you're staying safe. Anybody else who's in here, too, I hope you guys are staying safe uh, and helping keep other people safe, too. Opinion nine is a... In a way, in a way. Bye, guys.